Okay. I'm going to assume that it's started streaming now. I've had issues both the last two times I streamed where it cut off the beginning of what I was saying. So I'm hoping that we've bypassed that. Um, so, to explain what I'm doing today, I'm making a game. I can make a game. The issue is I'm doing it in a way that I've never done it before. So, this is an experiment. We're going to try it. I'm going to try not to get too technical on you. I just want to make the game and hopefully chat while I'm doing it. And so, that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to really quickly introduce you to the different things that we have. If we run into any technical difficulties, I've got, I've got a thing for that. Uh, we have Visual Studio Code. That's my... Um, never mind, we don't have that. Hold on. This is one of our technical difficulties. Okay, one second. I can't actually fix that and show you that at the same time. Alrighty. Okay, now we're going to fix it because I did break it. Okay. So there's our Visual Studio Code. Um, so it's what I'm using to program. I love it. And then what we have here is our EXE. So this is the game that we're actually working on. So the first thing that we're going to address here is all of our errors. And these are failed to load resource file not found. Now the reason why we have these is because it couldn't find the file despite the fact that the file does in fact exist. I know that it exists because the program knows that it exists. So allow me to explain what has happened here and we're actually going to fix this right away. So I have a piece of code called file manager. Um, it's file manager.js, that's the file name. But what it is is this piece of code right here. It's called the file manager. And it does all the stuff with the files that you want a game to do. It can make files, it can load folders and see what's inside the folders, it can delete folders, it can delete files, it can rewrite files, and it can read the text or whatever would be inside of a file as well. So it can do everything that we need to with files. It can even copy them and make new folders. It, it does literally everything, um, at least everything that I could think of. So what we had it do is we passed it the code. Okay, let me show you. So all the code that's currently being run is run through this. This is our initiate.js. So how I'm building this is I want to have libraries that I can use. And so file manager.js has become a library that I can now access. So I'm going to store that in another folder when I get around to it. And I can use that um, piece of code in a later uh, video game. If I make a second game, I can use that in that game. And that means that I, of course, have to run the code from something else that is specific to this game. And in our case, that is called initiate.js. So what I had it do is I had it load folder game files. And so if you look over here, you can actually see we have a game files folder. Let me, let me actually enlarge this for you. That might make it a little bit easier. So we got our game files. There's nothing in there yet. But when we get around to actually saving and doing all that fun stuff, that's where that's going to go. And then we also had it load the tiles. And so it loaded this, and that's how it knows that they exist. So I know that the computer knows that the files exist, but the computer doesn't know that the computer knows that the files exist. So how do we fix that? Well, it's actually really easy. I'm just a dummy. And what I didn't realize is that when we make it load it from the file manager, the file, man the file manager will see things from our executable files point of view. So that's this file right here. And this file gets to see everything that is in our main folder, essentially. Well, when we're trying to um, load things with our images loader, we're actually, I'll show you, we're using, um, let's see, we're using the document thing to make new images. And so our document is specific to our index.html, and it can only see things in our resources app folder, which means it does not see things from the same perspective as our executable file folder, which means that... Um, when I told it to load from our dot resources slash app slash tiles, it doesn't know that there's a resources in an app folder. It only knows that there's a tile folder. So if I get rid of this plus dir, it should work. Uh, we're going to see if it actually does or not. And it does. Lucky. I fixed it. Oh, wait. You can't actually see that. Hold on. Okay. There we go. I, I got rid of the. I'll, I'll reload it for you. Yeah, I got rid of the errors. So we got it to work. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to set up the hardest part of this entire thing, which is the graphical interface. And that is what I've been looking at for so long, and I don't actually know how to do the graphical interface. 
because I'm using something called Canvas, which I've never done before. And yeah. So let's get into fixing this. Uh, you'll notice all this code. A lot of it doesn't matter. What we're going to do actually is, before I get into that, we're going to work on our tile maps. So we're going to make a, whoops, we're going to make a space spaceship tile map. And the reason why is because our character is going to first start out in a spaceship. So that's what we're going to make. We're going to make a spaceship tile map. I'm actually going to make it an object because I can fix it later if we need to. I'm going to give it room one. So this is your starting room. We're going to put a, what is that called? An array down. And then inside the array, we're going to put down another array. And this is going to get confusing real quick. So I'm just going to do some enters and move things over. That way it's not confusing. And we're going to need a lot of these arrays because each array is going to represent a row of tiles. And so we're basically building a tile map and we're going to build it from numbers. So that's great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my resources app tiles folder. So that way I can look at and see what all my tiles have. You guys don't need to see this, but it's just the different tiles that I have. That way I can see which ones are which. And we're going to build our little area. So what I was thinking is we're going to have our first tile. So this would be number one for us. That's going to be um, the like the floor, the basic floor. And tile number four will be furniture um, or tile number nine. I'm not sure which. But basically one's a blue color and the other one is either going to be pink or purple. So this is going to be the top part of the room. We want it to be an odd number. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine will be good enough. Then in the center, we want there to be a door. So for that, we are going to use number five. And then we're just going to keep going, essentially. And in the center of the room, we want there to be a like a little chair thing. And that's where the character is going to be. So right here, we need there to be a chair. We're going to put that down as number nine. And then we're going to keep going. And we're just going to fill this up the rest of the way with ones. And that should fix it. And what this will do is if I've coded everything correctly, the program will read this and it'll see, okay, this one right here is the room. This is our first row. It'll read through and put all the tiles down. Then I'll move to the second row and put all those tiles down. And by the time that we're done, we'll have a nice looking room. Uh, if we wanted to have a blank tile, we just put in zero. Um, which is kind of odd because I did actually name one of my files 0.png. So I'm actually going to rename that to 10.png. It's not going to make a huge difference. Or I'm going to rename that to 12. 12.png won't make a huge difference because the game can figure it out by itself. It's a smart, it's a smart coding situation. I, I did good things. So we're just going to try that. I'm going to tell it to draw a tile map. Okay, let's go draw, or how did I have this set up? Create.drawTileMap. Okay, create.drawTileMap. And then we have to give it an area. So in our case, that's going to be tile sets or tile maps dot spaceship dot room one. Okay. All right, that should give it everything that it needs to know. Um, we're going to see if this actually works. Draw image on canvas we're in context to D, the provided value is not of type image. Okay. I see. I did a boo boo. That's what I did. So, <laughs> when we load the images, we put it into the cache, but we didn't give it a ID. Image dot ID equals I plus image. That might fix it. The other thing is it's drawing from our document, which is not what we want. We need it to draw from cache. Um, Images.cache. There, that's. Oop. I already had it figured out. Okay, that shouldn't mess it up too much. So now let's try it. Uh, okay. 
This is interesting. We've hit our first major error that I don't know how to solve. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a console.log. We're going to do um, images.cache sub area. Yeah, we're going to do that. And we're going to see what it gives us. It spits out undefined. Oh, no wonder it spits out undefined. I'm a dummy. You can't actually do that. Well, that's not good. Well, the only way that I can think to do this is to set up a for loop. So for let i equals zero, i less than images dot cache dot length i plus plus. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say if images dot cache sub i dot id I don't actually know if that's going to work. We're going to try it, and it'll either work or it will go terribly wrong. Um, so, yeah. But if they equal, then what we're going to do is we're going to say let... Oh, I actually need to declare this let up here. Otherwise, we're going to run into an issue. Let r equal... Well, just let r... Then we can have r equal the i... And then we're going to do return. No, we want to do break because I don't want to actually ruin the entire thing. And then we're going to go with an R. Oh, cache sub R. Otherwise, it won't work. So this is a very interesting little error that I did not foresee. Cannot read property 0 of undefined at 17. Huh. I need to console.log this. Um, Maybe it's the area. Because it should be able to read that. I should be getting a different array if I'm going to get an array or an error. Well, let's see if this gives us the error. That still gives us the error. What about this? That gives us a separate error. So that's not bad. What that means is I actually have to change this from image to temp object. And then I need to copy that actually and make sure that it is image. That way it fixes itself in case we actually have to do anything with it later. But then that should work. Ah. Uh, Okay. Oh. Okay. I've got good news and bad news. Which do you want first? Good news is it worked. Bad news is 
I'm kind of a dummy because I didn't set up any CSS. So the canvas doesn't know how big it's supposed to be, and it's just like willy-nilly guessing, and it, it, it guessed zero, pretty much. And that's not what we want. So how we fix that is we're actually going to steal this piece of code. Yeah, I, I do. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how to resize the images. There we are. So we need this function in our graphical display. Um, so that is the correct thing. Just paste that in. And then we need to resize the canvas every time we draw our tile map. So we're going to do resize canvas. And that should work. What we're going to do is we're actually going to tell it to return this. And we're also going to tell this to return this because what that will do for us is it will make it so that we can loop these or chain them. Chain them. Chaining is the right word. Draw is not defined. Dag nabbit. You don't have to draw that. Uh, well, should have worked. I wonder, the image, the image never got loaded. That will cause a bit of an issue. Okay, I know what we have to do now. So, when we initiate this, we have it be body. Does that change when we go to initiate it? No, the first thing that we do is we load the images. So, body dot or no, document, no, wait, hold on. Yeah, let's go with the document. Uh, get element by ID. We're gonna go body. We're gonna go dot inner HTML, or no, we're going to go, yeah. No, you wanna do dot append child. And we're gonna put image there. Uh, that should. They're not loaded, so image dot on load. Okay, image dot on load. Function. Well, when we want, so when it loads, what we need it to do. Yeah, we want this to be a function. And then what we want it to do is we want it to call images.load manager. So then what this is going to be is we're going to call load manager. We're going to give it nothing really, but what we're going to do is we're going to put load number up here. We're going to set that equal to zero. We're going to put a comma there. And then what this thing's going to do is it's going to say uh, this dot load number plus plus if this dot load number is equal to, um, we need to actually pull the array from this. Otherwise, bad things could happen. Is equal to array dot length. Um, then what we're going to do is first phase will be this part. Second phase will be this part. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function. We're going to call it phase one. Um, actually, let me do it this way. Variable initiate equals object phase one inside of phase one we're going to put all this 
We do want to have this constant outside of phase one, though. Any variables that we're going to declare, they just need to be declared. Um, then after that, we're going to do a comma phase two. And then that is where we're going to put all of this. And so then what we're going to do is we're just going to tell it to do um, initiate uh, dot phase one. And then we're going to go back to our graphical interface. No, we're going to go back to our images. And then we're going to put down here initiate dot phase two. I should fix it. Aha, we do have an error though. Image.onload is not a function. Hold on. Image.onload equals function. Fixed it. Okay, we, we have a thing. I don't know what that is, but it'll work. Um, we need to turn the margin off for the body. Margin zero. Put that there before I forget. There, okay. That's better. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, I set the scale to 16, so oh, maybe six that's 16 pixels. Maybe that's a little bit, maybe that's a little bit small. Let's try 64, that'll be four times. That's better. Now, I do want to say all it did was draw a blue rectangle. You guys can't even see it because I'm a dummy. There you go. That's what we've got so far. We've got a blue rectangle. So what we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at our game and check out what's going on because it should have also drawn 5 and 9. So we have something up. So let me just go console.log r, and then we'll be able to see one. It, they're all ones. I'm a dummy. That's what I am. Okay. No, wait. What did I? Let's try that. Well, that did not work. Well, here's an idea. If I do it like this, maybe it'll work. No, it, it only draws that. five ones but they're all in that area oh I've got it the error was on my part with me putting I instead of it being Z which is oh my gosh I feel like such an idiot Okay, I figured it out. 
Okay, let's get this all fixed. Okay. I really do feel like an idiot. How do I mess up something that is that simple? That simple. Okay. We got a 5 and we got a 9 this time. That's great. They're in the wrong spots. Why is there a green one? Okay, well, first thing that I want to say is the five should be at the top. And that whatever that green thing is, it should not be there. I don't even know what that green thing is. So what did it actually load? It loaded two and six. That's what it loaded. It loaded two and six. So, I bet you if I reload this enough times, they'll switch. No? Okay. I know what the issue is. So, if we go to files.tiles, all right, let's see. We got 0, 1, 10, 11, 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The issue here is that it loaded in the wrong order. So I told it to load number 9, which in this case is 6. It's this number. And then I also told it to load number 5, which in this case was 2. And that is, that is why it did it this way. Because I am a dummy. A little bit. At least a little bit. So, our issue here is that we're using the array area as our I instead of actually taking the file name and taking off four letters and then turning that into a number. So, how we're going to do that is we're going to Google. That, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to Google how to do that because I don't know how to do it. And we'll probably be done here in a second because, honestly, this is more progress than I thought that I'd make today. And I have to go mow the, the lawn. So that's pretty high on my priority list. But, uh, yeah. So let's see here. What was I going to Google? How to remove the last four letters of a string. Because that's what we want to do ultimately. Um, do, 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 substring in 32 and 32. Hold on. What does that do? Read the last three characters from a string initially asked question. You can use string that substring to give it the starting index, and then we'll get the substring starting from given index till end. It retrieves the substring from this instance the substring starts at a specified character position. My string dot substring, my string dot length minus three. Okay, so that's the that's the code that we're after. Alright, you guys are going to be absolutely amazed at how easy this is, but I knew that it was going to be this easy because everything is that easy. It's always easier than it looks. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say let my string equal, what do we want to get? We want to get array sub i. So we're going to get array sub i dot substring 0, my string dot length minus 4, no, Four. That would only give us one. That's what we want. So then what we're going to do is we're going to replace this i and, and the other i with my string. And then we're going to put a plus. That way it doesn't break on us. And that should fix it. So to make sure, let's just go back to our thing and let's do a reload. It cannot access my string before initialization. I'm a dummy. <laughs> okay. I goofed up one thing. So let me show you what I messed up. This my string right here that should actually be array sub i. 
because I I copied it from the internet, this one line of code, and so in the one line of code they just used my string a bunch of times. Well, uh, we have to actually modify it a little bit to make it better for our use. So now let's see if that fixed our error, and um, it did not. So how we're going to do this is because I don't know what array sub i is, we're going to console.log it. That way I can figure it out. Array sub i. Okay. So if I head back to our exe, I really need to set up buttons to do this for me. It says console. It's not a function. Console.log. Oh, I forgot the dot log. Okay, let's try that again. So we got 0.gif, which is what we wanted, but, okay, now I'm confused. Is that, that's not a, is that a string? I can't tell. Well, there's one thing that we can do, since we no longer need it after that point, what we can do is we can say array sub i is equal to array sub i dot to string. I don't know if that's going to work, but we can give it a shot. That didn't work. Okay, now we're going to head back to Google and we're actually going to look up substring in JavaScript. Okay, well, I've figured it out. There should be Um, what we want to do is we want to not capitalize the S in substring because that's not a thing. Yep, that's it. Just one capital S. Well, there we go. We got it. Count every property image of undefined on graphical interface 24. Images dot image. Cache sub R doesn't like this. And what did it get? It got an undefined. Um, that's odd. Okay. So R was undefined in this case. What that means is that none of their IDs matched. So we goofed up. So what we're what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head into our Visual Studio code real quick. We're gonna edit this code right here so that we can actually see what they are now after that little edit. We're gonna do console.log. I need to put that dot log there. We're gonna do images dot cache sub z dot id. Hopefully this gives us what we want. So let's go back to our, our executable file. Um, cache is not defined. Well, I put a comma instead of a period. Um, just image, that's it. It just gave us image. So I'm gonna switch it from minus four to minus three, the substring thing. And that didn't do anything. Um, Well, our other option is to try setting it to a string again, dot to string. So let's try that. That didn't work. This is not working good. Okay. Huh. Well, let's try a different method of doing this. That didn't work. Okay. Now we're going to head back to Google. And we're going to try to fix it. Um, 
Yeah, so we're going to try remove. String dot remove. Okay, that's that's our next best bet. And if that doesn't work, I think we're out of options. So, 0 dot gif. No, wait, is that what I want? Hold on. I need to console.log my string now. Um, array sub i dot remove is not a function. Well, what if we make it a capital? No, that doesn't exist either. Then what is this guy telling me? Is this even in JavaScript? No, this is in C sharp. No wonder it's not working. <laughs> okay. Well, that will that will do it. That will do it. So we just want to slice it. Okay, I should have known that it was a dot slice. Dot slice zero four. Wait, is that what we want? Zero comma negative four. Okay. All right, guys, I fixed it. It was me being a dummy and accidentally looking at code that was meant for C-sharp. So what we want to do is we want to delete those because they don't matter. And we want to delete this line of code. And so basically we just changed it from substring to slice. And that is just so much easier. So I honestly hate C-sharp. It is my least favorite coding language because I don't know how to do it. Oh, and it worked. It worked. Okay, that's exactly what we want. We do have an issue. Our issue is that there's not a blue square under our arrow. So our arrow has a translucent background, which means that we should be able to put a blue square under it. I just haven't initiated that in the code yet. So I don't exactly know how we're going to do this. My best bet is to head back to our graphical interface. And this is where we draw our images. So what we want to do is if r is equal to 5, which I think that that'll work. Um, then what we want to do, wait, actually, let me check. I can actually check this if I go here and I look if we got a 5. Do we pass it a 5? Um, okay, I've got way too much stuff going into the console at the moment. Let's get rid of that. Let's reload this. So no, it got a 1 and then it got an 8. So 8. Why did it get an 8? Why did it get an 8? It doesn't really matter except for it does. Um, so now I'm trying to see. So R equals Z. So what we know is that images.cache sub Z is the same as our images.cache sub I. What did I just do? Okay, so we know that this is, or wait, if we put an R here, it should be the same because we just made R equals Z. So it should work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check its ID. And what we want to check is if it's equal to 5 image. If it is equal to 5 image, then what that tells us is that we're looking at an error, er, an arrow, not an error. But so then what we're going to do is we're going to take this code, we're going to paste it in, and we're also going to take this code and we're going to paste it in. And I don't know what we're doing at the moment, actually. I want it to draw whatever is below it in the area. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is figure out what area we're on, which is I is sub i sub j. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to take area sub i sub j, and then we want to move it down one row. So we want to do i plus 1. So that'll give us 1 below it. And since this is an up arrow, that's OK. And then we want to find whatever that is, and we want to draw that. Our only issue becomes the fact that we're now using r a second time. So we need to declare another variable. We're going to call it l just because we can. And so we want to set l equal to our z. 
And if I'm correct, this will work. And it worked. Oh, wait, you guys can't see it. Um, voila, it worked. It worked. We put the blue square under it. Now, if I'm correct, if I go into our, uh, where's our tile set? If I go into our tile set and I would change the number below the arrow to like a two, which is a green square, it should show up as green under the arrow instead of blue. And it does. Okay, that works perfectly, except for when I put furniture there. So I'll have to work on this at some point, but I think that that, that, that does well for now. I can say if it's a nine, we get the one beside of it or something. Or I could actually figure out how to um, figure out with the most number there. Or, 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 oh, I just had a beautiful idea. So let me show you what I just thought of. So what we have here is we have a spaceship. We have this room one. Now what this is, is this is our array. This is our tile map. And because we have a spaceship as an object, what we can do is we can say room one, um, uh, basic floor and then we can set that equal to let's say one because that's the that's the uh, um, image ID it is so now whenever we draw an arrow in room one we know that the basic floor color of it should be uh, the blue which is our image one so how do we set that up over here what we need to do is we need to actually instead of matching it with this we need to match it with our um, area dot oh wait area is not well, oh okay hold on now that's not gonna work I mean it will work but I have to adjust some things because what I just realized is that the only thing that we passed it was this we did not pass it this and since this is not an object we have a little bit of an issue uh, simple fix is just to make this an object, which, you know, we can do. And um, what this is going to be is this is going to be our tiles. And then this can just snug itself right in there. And we're going to have to pass it um, a little bit different information in order to make it work. The way that we're interested in it working um, that's not what I wanted I'm trying to square up these brackets so that they actually look right okay so now what we have to pass it is room one but then we have to tell it area dot tiles so that's not gonna be too bad that's not gonna be too bad at all so where did I draw this I draw this from initiate so what we're going to tell it is room one dot oh no wait that's fine we don't have to change that but we do want to change in here is anywhere that we see area except for the first spot that we see area okay we only see it four times well each of those times it needs to go to dot tiles and then down here we're going to take area dot and now i have to go and see what i called it again because i forgot where did i put it dot room one basic four. Oh, hold on um yeah let's just call it basic four before i get carried away and start creating errors for myself later on down the line which we would not want that would be very bad so if we do it like this it works but if i were to change it to a two. Okay, now let me show you guys what I'm seeing on our executable file. So basically the square underneath the arrow should turn green, but the arrow should say blue, and it does, and it works perfectly like that. And now we can do the same thing for arrows, um, uh, the left, right, and down arrows. So that would be six, 10, and 11. Those are also ones that need to have it, and so does seven and eight. So because seven and eight are item boxes, so those are the image IDs in case you haven't caught on to that already. So what we want to do is we want to check if it is equal to 5, but I hope that this works. Or 6 image, because if this does not work, I'm going to have to do a lot of typing. Um, we also want to do it for 7 image. That needs to be put into uh, quotation marks. Um, 
We also want to check it for eight image. We also want to check it for 10 image. And we also want to check it for 11. And currently that's all that we have to check it for. But as soon as we go to draw our player, we're going to have to copy this code. Um, now, how do we check if this works? The answer is pretty easy. We're going to try the, uh, and we're going to try it with this code and see if it gives us an error. It does not. Then what we're going to do is we're going to swap it from a five to a six and just see what happens. And it, it messes up. That's what it does. So if it's a five, it works okay. If it's a six, it messes up. So why does that happen? Um, you know, to be honest, I couldn't tell you. Let me try it as a seven. Let's see what happens if it's a seven. It doesn't do it, but it does it for five. Um, so maybe it only takes the first number and the rest of these don't matter. Um, shoot. So I'm trying to think what the easiest way to do this is. Uh, I, what I want to do is I want to put all of these into an if function so that I can check all of them without having to actually write out the check for all of them because it's such a big amount of code. The best that I can think of is to do a switch and do cases, but at the same time, I don't think that that's a great idea. So, I could do, yeah, yeah, this, this, okay. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to copy this and just paste it for every single one. It's not great. I guess the best that we could do is to put this down as a variable and just make it like say r and say r equals x or something because we're currently not in a for loop so we could say let capital r equal that and then we can replace all of these with capital r and maybe it'll work but that does significantly reduce the coding requirement well it okay so let's go back to the executable file it looks okay so far. Now I'm going to change it to a six, which is um, one of the other arrows. Okay, it worked. Okay, this is promising. Um, let's go seven. Okay, that worked. What about eight? Okay, this is good. This is good. We got 10 and we have 11. So let's check 11. Okay, it works. Sweet. All right, so we're going to replace this back with a five. Now, when I actually get like um, tiles and I get them colored and everything, uh, I will replace these with the actual tiles. It's not a big deal because once again, all I'm, uh, let me show you, all I'm messing with is just with this box right here, telling it which image to load and stuff. So it should be foolproof. Now, let me tell you, errors can happen in ways that you'd never expect in places that you didn't expect that you thought it was impossible for an error to appear. I've had errors appear in stupid places, sometimes just because I write a comma instead of a period. So it should be foolproof, but something could go wrong, but it should be foolproof. Now the, uh, the biggest issue is going to come when we try to draw the player. I want to set that up real quick, actually. So what we know is that the player position is going to be 0, uh, x is 0, and y is 0. But the issue is we actually don't want that to be the player position. So every time that we resize the canvas, what we need to do is we need to actually get the player position to be equal to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go player positions.x is equal to canvas.width divided by 2. And the same thing for our y, but we want it to be for canvas.height. And what this should do is it should center this, um, our box, our room. It should center that. Okay. Nearly. That's not exactly what I was after. It centered it uh, 
Oh, oh, okay. Okay, that, that's very bad. That's very bad. Oh no, why is it white? Shoot. Okay, one second. Background color, black. Just did some CSS stuff to fix that. Okay. So I don't get why the canvas within height is not working. Oh, maybe I want it to do window inner width. Let me try that. So instead of this, what I want to do is I want to do window.innerwidth. Or, yeah, inner height. No, I want to do inner width for that one. And then I want to do inner height for this one, and maybe that'll work. Um, before I start crashing things by using capital letters when I'm not supposed to, let's, let's fix that. Okay, so now let's see if that actually works at all. No, no, it did not. That is bizarre. So we go back to Google. Um, how to to center an image in Canvas JavaScript. Um, okay, that's not helpful. That one piece of code is not helpful. Um, okay, what am I looking at here? So they got a width to height ratio. Oh, well, that's one though. The width to height ratio is one because it's 16 pixels long as it is 16 pixels high. So I don't actually have to worry about that because I'd just be dividing it by one. Wait, what are they even using? I've never seen that before. Okay, so this is saying that we need to take the width and the height and divide them by two. So, not what we're doing. So it wants us to do this, and then it wants us to divide by the image width, divide that by two, whatever the image width is. So how we're going to figure that out is they should be 16 pixels big. So in which case we have 16 times scale my or divide by two and if I put parentheses around I mean I know that like the computer should be able to figure that out but and then it should be the same thing down here now let's see if that actually fixes it because if it does that's gonna be no that made it worse that made it far 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 worse okay well let's say that we don't have the 16 there let's just say that scale no no that didn't do anything that did squat. Darn. Wait. Oh. Okay, I got it. This is centered. This square right here, the first tile that we place is actually centered. But the rest of the tiles aren't centered because they come after it. So what that tells me is that I need to know the player's position in the room, which in this case should be the dead center. Aha, this, this, this reveals some stuff. So player... 
player position is going to be uh, it should be the center. So in our case, that's three down, so that would be two, and that's four across or five across, so that would be four. So two comma four. So um, what that? What can we do with that? What we can do with that is we can tell it that at two four it needs to start switching. Um, Dang, this has never been this hard before. I've not run into this issue. So, I've got it, I think. So what we want to do is we want to take the player positions.x and then what we want to do is we want to subtract, hold on, j times scale what is that for? It tells us the x location. Okay, so that's how many images in we are. I see. So the player positions dot x is going to be the center of the screen, and then we need to subtract from that, or we need to add to that. Um, we're going to add to it. What do we have? We had area dot player positions. No, we need that to be lowercase dot player position. Um, sub. In this case, we want zero because it'll be the first one, and then we're going to multiply that. Or no, that's wrong. We want to add to it j times the player position zero minus i yes yes that works no hold on I'm thinking so What I know is I know what row and what spot the player is located. So I need to adjust all of them based on that. So what I'm attempting to do is I tells me what row we're on. And in the X, I don't actually care about what row. I just care about what spot we're in. So I'd actually want that to be a J. J times no. So we don't want this to be a J. We want this to be a scale. Okay, that works. That works. That works. That should work. Um, and then we're gonna have to repeat that on the I position. So we're gonna do it like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change that to a Y. We're going to change this to a 1, and we're going to change that to an I. I hope that that works. I hope that that works so much. And then the next thing that we want to do is because I actually didn't do it on the rectangle. The, so what this does is if it's a 0, we fill it with a blank rectangle, basically. Yeah, I didn't do it there. So let's fix that. Okay, here we go. Oh, you guys can't see anything. I am a dummy. Okay, let me show you what I just did. Um, so I changed where we're locating it. At this point, this just said player position x, which is why it looks so funky. But hopefully now it's fixed. Oh, I can't believe that I did that and didn't let you guys see it. I. Well, that is worse than before. I've. Okay, it's now off the screen. Um, <sighs> I 
16 times 4 minus j. That should be a minus sign. That should not be a plus sign. I found our issue. So, yeah, these should all be minus signs. None of these should be plus signs. These should all be minus signs. I knew something fell off. Those should all be minus signs. That's closer. That is much closer. Okay, you guys can't see it, but let's see. That's much closer. Do you see that? That is much, much, much closer. So our issue is that now we're off by like a very minute amount. This should be like down here, and, it, and it's not. Yeah, so this should be like down here. So we're off by not much at all. Um, So let me try what that one person said again. Or maybe not. Hold on, I need to think. I really need to think. Did I just accidentally open up Discord? Oh, for Pete 6 I hope I did not. I think I did though. Hold up, I'm pulling up Task Manager to kill Discord before it uses all my internet and drops the frames on the stream. Okay, maybe I didn't. No, I did. I actually don't know which Discord I'm supposed to end, which which one of these processes. Um Oh. Okay, I've got good news. We killed it. Um, all right, back to this. This is a tricky situation. Oh. Okay. So I know why we had that. The scale divided by two minus scale divided by two. That will, that will, that will fix some of our issue. That will fix us by about like 32 pixels in each direction. So that's good. Now, the other issue that we're going to have is that somebody messed this up a little bit. And it was me. But I don't know what I did wrong. So I think I just need to constant lock these to actually see if they're big numbers or if they're little numbers or what they are because that matters. And the reason why it matters is because if they're big numbers, you know, that's great. If they're little numbers, that ain't good. 311 is not... No, that's right. Because this, is... this would be about 600. Yeah, 311. Wait, 311. Well, we did subtract 32 from it. So if you were to divide, yeah, that that is right. That is right. So we've got that right. That's our good news. We have the positioning correct. Our only issue is that we want... Okay, I need to get a piece of paper and start writing this down. Um, okay, where'd I put my pen? I lost my pen. Don't worry about that. That was a deck box. It was empty. It doesn't matter. Okay, so what I'm thinking is we need our center square to appear at 
whatever coordinates we have, like 311 and whatever. So when we're doing this, this code right here, we need that to read 311 when j is equal to 4. So when j is equal to 4, that needs to be 311. So the j times scale, j times scale, which is 16. So I'm just actually going to say 4 times 16, because we actually know what these are, plus 311 minus 6, oh no, these are 64s, my bad, 64 minus 64 times area dot player position sub zero, that should be a 4 minus j, which is 4, minus 4. Okay, so if I do this math right, what we're going to end up getting is whatever 4 times 64 is, I don't want to do that math because it's going to cancel. 311 minus 64 times 4 minus 4. But we want it to read 311 there. So I have these in the wrong order essentially. So this minus 4 doesn't matter, unless we have it, no, yeah, so we don't want this minus j here. We don't want that there. So that needs to disappear. So if we take off the minus 4, then what we're looking at is 311 minus 64 times 4 plus 4 times 64. So that should work. If I did my math right. And if I wrote that thing down correctly, that made little to no difference in where it's located. I'd say that this is about where our center is, and this is too far over. Um, shoot, what did I do wrong? Where did I math this wrong? Let me see. Okay, so we're looking at this code again. Or wait, hold on. It's easier if I use this one. We're looking at this code. We've got j, which is going to be 4, times 64, plus 311, minus 64, times 4. That is 311. Somebody tell me I'm going crazy, because that's 311. And that's what we know, okay. I should have kept task manager open. Okay, so that's, we know that that is, okay, get out of here, close window, end it, end the task. Oh, shoot. Okay, it's gone. Um, I guess my only thing to check is if we actually did set it to 4. We set it to 4. So yeah, that's right. Because this is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So at 4... Oh, okay, well, I know an easier way to do this. We lop that off. We say, okay, hold on. Let's grab those. We're going to lop that part off, and then we're going to put over here J minus player position sub one, zero. No, that should be a one. There is our problem. I inverted the X and the Y. 
Um, yep, that that will do it. That'll do it. Oh, player position. It's not defined. Okay. That should be area dot player position, shouldn't it? Okay, let's try it again. Okay, we have it centered on the X. This is beautiful. Now we just have to center it on the Y. And we'll have it. Okay. Yep, I, I swapped the X and the Y. That was my issue. I swapped the X and the Y. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're going to copy it. We're going to take this. We're going to paste. Wait, we're going to paste it on all of them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change this from player.position x to a y, and then we're going to change this from a 0, or from a 1 to a 0, and then we're going to change this from a j to an i. Now the other thing that we're going to do is we actually don't need parentheses around this player position right here, so we're going to remove those just to save on space. I know it's like I'm saving like not even that much space, but we're going to do it, and then we're also going to do it here. The only issue is this is going to destroy your console down there, console.log, because it no longer has parentheses around it. So let's fix that. And now this should completely center itself. It should completely center itself. Let's go. Okay, now the only thing that we have to do is we have, oops, we have to tell it to center itself every frame. Hold on, I'm trying to open back up the dev tools. Would you inspect it for Pete's sakes? Inspect it. Okay, there, the dev tools are back open. So, what we can do now, we have one of two options. We can, and I'm gonna choose option two. Option two is a little bit weird, but basically our first option is to run it on a uh, interval. And you know, as much as I like that, that wastes, um, players processor and all power and all that stuff and we don't need to be doing none of that so what we're going to be doing is we're going to find our whatever it's called it'll come to me in a second I know it will we're looking for shoot shoot what is it called what is it called? What is it called? Event. Event. We're looking for an event thing. I don't know what you call it. Why does my head do this to me? Well, it's not there. Somewhere here we put a event listener. There we go. That's what it's called. We put an event listener onto our thing that whenever it got resized, we we did a thing. Window to add event listener resize. If CTX is true, that's what we want. So we're gonna copy that. We're going to head over here, and basically this should go in phase two. Um, as a matter of fact. Hold on. Does that, no, that, that gives us no errors, so that's okay. So what we're going to do then is we're gonna actually delete this because we don't care about those anymore. I got what I wanted. Window to add event listener, resize, resize canvas, false. That should probably house those on it. Document to add event listener, mouse down. We don't care about that. We don't care about none of that. And initiate phase one, phase two. Where does it load the thing? Create. There we go. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try running this. What this should do is every time that you uh, change the size of the canvas, I goofed up. That's what I did. Okay. What is this error? Resize canvas is not defined. Oh, 
That should say, it'll come to me what that should be. That should be a create dot resize. That's, that's going to cause some issues if I don't fix that. So that's what we want to do, create dot resize canvas. OK, that should fix it. OK, now watch. Whenever, if I do like this, oh, that didn't work. But if I do like this, oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. You're kidding. Okay. Oh, wait. It's working. Oh, but it doesn't draw it. So, <laughs> oops. Okay. Uh, I just switched that to draw tile map. Okay. Okay, I've had to do some minor changes because stupid things. That's why. Okay, I basically replaced this with create a couple times to fix the. Area. Area. Dang. Nah. Okay. Okay. Here's how we solve this. We go up here to our player positions. We do area, and we're going to set that to tile maps. Or we're just we're just going to leave that as a zero. We're just going to leave that as a we're going to leave that as a null because we don't care what that is right now. And then what we're going to do is. When we do our create, where is that? That is our initiate. When we do this, before we do that, we're going to say player positions. Player, where's my enter key? Player positions dot area is equal to tile maps dot spaceship dot room one. And then that lets us go in here and down here. Wait, where am I putting this? Dang it, I forgot. Create dot draw tile map player positions dot area. There, that fixes all of our problems. I hope. I really do hope because if we get another error, I'm going to be defeated. Like, not actually, but mentally, I will be tired. Cannot read property tiles of null. Where did that error come from? Okay. I know how to solve this. This is just the most stupid, actually, error that I've ever seen. So, we're going to cut this. We're going to go create dot resize manager. Oh, this is such a stupid, stupid, stupid error. Then we're going to make a thing called resize manager. We're going to put that in there. It's going to solve all of our problems. And if it doesn't, I'm going to be disappointed. Okay. Looky there, looky, I did it. We got it to work. We got it to work. That's that's wonderful. Now we're going to go remove the console.logs at 51 and at 25 because that's annoying. And now we're going to head back and we're going to reload it and look at that. Isn't that a beauty? Okay, sweet. Now I have to actually draw the player.
but we're gonna t we're gonna tackle that next time. Uh, along with drawing the player, we're going to add the keybind to let the player move. We're going to add the collision with stuff because currently nothing has collision. We're going to add another room. Just these are both test rooms. These will both be test rooms. And we're going to add another room that we can walk into, hopefully. And then I plan on adding a pause menu that will contain um, a way to save the game, a way to look at your inventory, and all that other stuff. Now these are just plans that I have. There's no guarantee that we're actually going to get them done tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, but whenever I do this. Um, I might do it tomorrow. I was thinking of doing Binding of Isaac tomorrow. So I'll probably do this maybe on Friday or the weekend. We'll figure it out. I really don't know what tomorrow's going to have. I might not even be streaming tomorrow. But if I am, it'll be the Binding of Isaac. Because I really like that game and I want to get back into it. Um, I know that I only spent one day not doing it. But I wanted to do this because I needed to do this. And... I'm glad I got it done. This was the hardest thing for me was actually doing this. And I just needed to talk it through and having somebody out there watching, listening to me that I don't even know. For some odd reason, it helped me. It gave me motivation. So thank you for watching if you have watched. And if you want to see more of this, go ahead and do a follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube. And I'll let you guys know when I'm tackling it again. So that'll be all. Thank you guys, everybody, and goodbye.